Welcome to the Vinny Rock Podcast. Podcast. I took the blow. The Vinny Rock Podcast. What's up, y'all? We're live right now. I'm going to wait a little bit for people to get up in here. I got my man in here, Mike Beltran. You guys probably know him as Ibarra on Mayans. You also probably know him as a UFC MMA referee all over the place. You've seen him in all kinds of major fights. He's been in movies and shows, all kinds of stuff. What up, dog? What's going on, big dog? Chilling. What's up, Timmy? Man, I'm in here grubbing, eating my breakfast, got my coffee on. You got coffee today, too? That's right, brother. Go Raiders. Go Raiders. That's right. Oh, my goodness. Last night, I pulled a hamstring playing softball. You're getting hmm. old, bro. You're getting old. That's what happens. Yeah. You should stretch. I know. Before you start playing with your kids, homie. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's messed up. Yeah. By the way, let me... Mike, make sure you push it. Put, put, whoa, pusting. What is that? What the, the mind <laughs> out of the gutter, bro. Yeah, what is happening? <laughs> Good morning. What's what do you what kind of sandwich you having, bro? <laughs> hey, we got our yeah. sponsors. You got Core Medical Group. Don't forget they do testosterone replacement therapy. Um, they can ship it directly to your house. They can do all your blood work. Go check that out. You got live bearded promo code Rocco. Live bearded has all your beard necessities from oils shampoos they're a good company check them out willie peach chocolates it's a veteran who makes chocolate out of his own home adds scoville units to it don't forget them they have some really spicy chocolates out there if you like spice you like chocolate go hit hit them up dead eye outfitters dead eye outfitters we're going to be doing a lot of stuff with veteran and them we have a golf tournament coming up soon hey bro you want to come play golf with me do you want to do go do you like golf or what mike um i'll uh you know what bro you will hang out? I'll hang out. I'll drive you guys around. <laughs> I, I, you can't hate on golf because they allow you to drink and drive. So there you go. <laughs> a, it, it's still considered a sport, so you can't hate on golf. So you, you can pencil me in on that one, brother. I'll drive you. That's it. So you guys go hit up Dead Eye Outfitters. They got outfitters. They got all kinds of cool stuff. They got some 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 um man plaid shirts. That, what do you call them? Flannels, man. I'm so bad Flannels. at Flannels. Yeah, they got the flannels. Hey, I sent you a couple, didn't I? Yeah, this is good shit, bro. I love them. Yeah, there you go. Hell yeah, yeah. man. Yeah, I'm a big fan of them. They're, 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 they got they got some solid gear for sure. You got bullion box, bullion box subscriptions.com. Go hit them up for your precious metals, silver, gold, all that jazz. Go hit up veteran.com. Veteran is on its last week of the giveaway. Hit them up. You got modern gun school. Uh, it is a distance learning armor school. It's at www.mgs.edu. Go use your Voc Rehab. Go use your GI Bill and get your education on and learn how to build guns from the comfort of your own home. Amen. Yeah, we got Econ Bulldog. If you guys are looking to make some extra cash, if you're looking to use the e-commerce world, hit up econbulldogs.com and get his lessons. We'll put it all up in the chat. You guys go check it out, and we're going to get moving here. You guys already know who this is. You guys already know who it is. My man Ibarra from Mayans MC. What is up, dog? What's going on, Rocco? Buenos dias. Good morning. What's cracking? Good morning. Good morning. Mm. Are you, what's your beard routine like in the mornings? My beard, <laughs> my beard routine. Well, you know, I'm a, I'm a bit of a clean freak when it comes down to hygiene and stuff like that. So I actually... I actually condition my beard uh, twice a week and uh, wash it, let it out, and then I just tie it up, you know, and let it let it flow free, bro. You know what I'm saying? Just just kind of kind of kind of just let it hang. Do you have to let, let it dry first? Um, you know, yeah. I I uh, usually I'm in a hurry and I'm always I'm always on the go. I don't always let it out. I'll just actually cheat and I'll let out the top one and then I'll just wash it here because it gets itchy at times, especially after workouts and stuff like that. So before I hit the rack, I, I uh, um, wash it and I just kind of let, let this thing dry up and stuff and, and then I just hit the rack. That way in the morning, I'll just get it going. But if I'm in a, if I got time, 
I let it out and I'll just blow dry it, dude. Go easy, go easy, top style, and, and, <laughs> and just let it, 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 let it flow in its natural habitat. <laughs> it's, it's got a mind of its own no man it's it's crazy so me and me and mike go back longer than we even know because mike yeah. beltran early on in the game when he when he first started being a referee uh he was able to he was able to reach uh, i guess get to know my father who is a cut man carlos a big cut man in the industry and they met and they became friends and my dad was there to just just to be kind of the old timer in the game, trying to guide him in his ways if he had questions. And, Absolutely. Uh, and then eventually, right? Eventually, spoiler alert, guys. Yeah, you guys are asking. There's spoiler alerts all all over this one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but then me and me and Mike, we hit each other up on social media. He's a, he's a veteran doing his thing. Um, I'm a veteran doing my thing, and it was just kind of like let's our powers combined, and we realized all the things we had in common from, from prior law enforcement, me being prior law enforcement, him continued the law enforcement, getting into acting and, and moving on that route. And so it was kind of cool to hear that you knew my dad and you guys had a relationship before. And then me and you now have our relationship, what we have today. Absolutely, dude. Your, your dad, first off, uh, um, you can't give enough uh, credence to your father. Who's uh, you no know, Carlos, man, Carlos, man. Uh, he, uh, he, he, he's a, uh, He's definitely unconventional looking, uh, much like his, uh, much like his son took after his father. Uh, <laughs> if you, if you, if anyone knows who Cupman Carlos is, which you guys should know, but he's a low key man, very humble. Um, he's tatted down all the way down. And, uh, I never thought your dad was, uh, was a Cupman, just like people would think that I was a, you know, I'm a cop as well. So come to find out he's actually was a, was a fireman and was a captain for LA city and was is a phenomenal is a phenomenal continues to be one of the best cut men in the world but yeah your dad did school me in the in the cage when i had fights and uh he goes hey um you may want to look at this cut a little closer keep an eye on this kid yes sir yes sir yes sir and, and uh and uh he, he he always uh he always looked after me and 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 and, and uh, pointed out specific cuts uh, which I already knew already, but when you had somebody who's who's seen more cuts than I have, and uh, definitely being a fireman, definitely had has had his share of uh, of uh, cuts and superficial cuts, if you will, and put them together. Um, your dad is is the one who was one of the first ones in the industry when I first started, who was one of my the guys that took me under his wing as far as the cutting goes. So that's your pop, man. Big shout out to your dad, and here I am talking to your ass, and and uh, we connected, and uh, what a small world it is, man. So, it is, it you know, is, your, your 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 dad raised a raised a good man, and and, and here we are, bro. Bro, dude, I tell you what, I hate that we're even having this conversation on the terms <laughs> that we're having them, bro. You know, it was it it was fun to have you on set, but not even that. Like working with you, kind of helping at times right guiding you he's showing you the ropes because i've already now been on the set for several years and i'm like hey this is how it goes blah 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 and it, it it was an honor having you on set and you know the spoiler alert in the room is it's going to be rough next year when you're not there <laughs> yeah bro it uh well first and foremost even before you know any of this stuff here you know I was very grateful to even be considered and then let alone casted on, on, on the set. But when people actually don't know, or they kind of quasi know is what a really a tight cast Mayans is and how everyone promotes each other and helps each other out. It's, 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 it's truly a, a family. And it was, it was unique because we did have a, a, a cocktail of, of many different walks of life on that cast. Yeah. Um, you had me who's a current law enforcement involved in mixed martial arts as an official. Uh, you had ex cons who have turned their life around and, and are doing phenomenal and are doing good things with their cause and, and um, helping other people with their, with their own way of um, outreach and helping folks out spiritually or, or with, with substance abuse or whatever they have uh, or alcohol. And these are guys that actually have turned it around. And, and you have me as a cop. You have you as a former cop. 
uh, you know, definitely a war hero and, uh, and a, um, you know, uh, an army ranger, um, who speaks volume. So we had all this personalities on the set and, uh, we made it work. And, um, here we are. And it was an amazing run. Elgin James, you know, what can I say, man? He's, he's a, he's a solid dude. And, you know, Debbie, uh, you know, my, my boy, Brian Gracia, um, yes. yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a good dude right there, man. I love that dude. And, um, you were definitely one of the ones I would go to, to, uh, Hey man, how was that? Where do I go? And how did that yeah. look? I th- you yeah, know, it's yeah. funny. There's something about all of us <clears throat> actors who kind of want that immediate affirmation or, or Absolutely. that, that feedback, right? Is it good? Do you want me to change it? Do I need to shift it? What is it? You know? And so that's kind of the, the power behind it all is we want to, we always want to go to someone that we trust will give us good feedback. Absolutely. I mean, you were, um, <clears throat> Emilio Rivera was, man, I, I can't, I can't say mine's without Emilio, you know? And, and, uh, that's a, that's, that's the homie right there, man. He, he, uh, he actually gave me my first acting class. So really, <laughs> yeah, dude, he did. He did. actually, I actually auditioned for Ganchi. No way. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, that fucker killed me, man. <laughs> 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 yeah, who, who'd have thought, dude? I mean, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy punked me out of that spot, dude. Yeah, dude, the, you did a the great actor, job. We gotta gotta give a shout out to Jimmy, man. For yeah, sure. the the actor who plays Concha, his name is Jimmy. Jimmy Jimmy's last name is Gonzalez. Remember. There you go, Jimmy Gonzalez. Yeah, man, I'll tell you what, that guy when he <laughs> he talks, it pisses me off. That's one of those characters where. He's he's so good at it that yeah, you gotta you gotta respect it. And every time he talks, I saw him. He's got a new movie coming out on Netflix, right? And I saw him. I'm like, oh fuck! <laughs> you know, you get so <laughs> mad, bro. It's one of those actors where you you see him on the street and still talk shit to the motherfucker, right? Because like, yeah. fuck that dude, fuck Conche, bro. <laughs> yeah, dude, he's 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 such a good dude. We we do talk and uh, we do keep in contact, man. But I actually auditioned for for for, for Ganche. Yeah. and uh that's what i auditioned for and i go man that's a that's, that should be a good role for me and uh just you know in typical minds fashion they they know where to put the strengths where they need to be at and personalities that'll suit um their narrative yeah. and i thought actually ibarra was more my personality and they they, they, they nailed it and um they gave me this opportunity to play, um, you know, to, 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 to suit the role of Ibarra. Yeah. And, um, you know, and I, and I, I, I went out, I prepared myself and did the best I could. Obviously you, know, I got, you, you got a lot of frequent phone calls and, uh, uh, we went over a lot of things, but, um, no, first off, thank you, man. And, and, uh, for helping me out a lot, dude, I, I really appreciate it, dude. That's, I'm, I'm, I'm being real on that end. And the guys on the cast know who they are. Michael Irby, dude. How about how about Bish, bro? Wild man, bro. He's a fool, dude. He's yeah, a wild bad. man. I'm gonna he's try and get him on here. I don't think he wakes up early enough for this. He does, and I doubt <laughs> it, dude. He's that guy was was another one that was super cool, and and JD was very very affirmative about how he 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 uh um he gave me a lot of confidence as well, and and everybody there, man. Creeper, um, yeah. you know, Joseph's another solid dude. Frankie Loyal. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on. And Clayton, those are all good guys, man. So well, most it, don't it, realize. Yeah, what most don't realize is how much of a leader JD is on the show. Like, off the yeah. set. That dude, like, I'm going to get him on here one of these mornings, but JD genuinely um, is the best leader. I mean, out of all my military, all this stuff, you got guys who, who kind of stand out, and JD is definitely one of those guys who stands out who, who will go out there and coach and mentor and talk and just guide and and, and it's just it's beautiful to see he doesn't have to do that shit dog he don't have to but he does no he 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 does he's very subtle uh he's not condescending um but yeah he one thing about jd that i really appreciated that uh honestly the guy leads by example you know he's so prepared he's he's he come, he's a true professional. Everybody there's a true professional, and 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 then sometimes we have folks that 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 that, that struggle a little bit on trying to get lines out and and uh, um, nerves or <laughs> you can, we get all of us get brain farts. But it happens, man. Um, 
he was definitely one of the guys that 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 just leads by example, man. And and he, he is a that guy is you're right, dude. He's he's got he's he's a natural leader. He really yeah. is. He, he yeah. sure is, man. He, and he's a good guy too. Yeah. So, what was your favorite scene this season that you you were a part of? What is the one that stands out to you that <clears throat> that you really loved? Um, I think for me, the biggest scene and the biggest challenge was and my favorite was episode two that set the tone for the narrative of Ibarra and and the conspiracy that goes with it with conspiring with with Santo Padre and sitting at the table pretty much coming from Tucson knowing that he's taking care of Ibarra's character is a loyal soldier and he's looking to take care of his charter and, and his, his, his folks that are busted in, in, in prison. Mm. Obviously the, the dope line goes in there. So they get protection from the, from, from everybody there. Cause they're supplying everybody with the dope. He wants to make sure that they're secure. And when that was compromised by Canchi and, and Ramos um, and things weren't going his way, he had to humble himself to go to Santo Padre to meet with Bishop, reacquaint himself. And that to me was a, a very, very powerful scene that, that I thought it was, it was, it was, it was awesome between the dialogue between Bishop and I, and then the interruption by JD on how we can accomplish it and how pissed off you were, um, you know, Frankie and everybody at the table were Hank uh, on the show and, uh, and Creeper and everybody around. I thought that was, uh, that was pretty good. And then you got uh, Angel with a smart ass remark. And then I fire off on him to show the character of the fury of Ivana. He said, he said, he said, on her hands and knees. And he said, what and why? And you're like, because I fucking had to. It's like, <laughs> bro, when you said that in the room, like, it's like, oh, fuck. That's <laughs> damn. And genuinely, on that scene, I'm sitting there. And, you know, I'm watching you as a friend, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see if there's something I would coach you in or whatever. And who am I to coach? I'm just, I'm just trying to give feedback. But then when you hit that line, I was like, Fuck. <laughs> you felt the power, man. You felt, look, bro, you're not a small dude, right? You're a very big and you're also intimidating and everything. But like, when you said that line in the room, I think we all were like, oh shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, it's a very powerful scene. I love that. That, that was that was my favorite scene, and I remember asking you between between breaks because of COVID and mask on, mask off, and and um, um, that 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 whole drill. I remember talking to you. Yeah. I was I was uh, I, I was in the zone, and I started finding myself as to where I was at. And also, I mean, what better coach to have also than better than having an Anthony Gallardi in your corner. Uh, you know, yep. that's the man, bro. And, and, uh, uh big handful of us, a big handful of us have used him, uh, for and, multiple different levels of coaching and acting and guidance. I call him sometimes just questions still now, like that. Anthony Gillardi is definitely a, a big help to a lot of guys on the minds. He, he definitely was to me. And that's who, who, who was my coach, um, for every scene. And then once I got to the, to the, to the set, obviously you were my, uh, my, my, uh, my security blanket to a lot of the, the <laughs> a lot of the uh, scenes. I'm gonna try and tag his his uh, Facebook in this too. So if anyone's interested in getting some acting classes, uh, I'll try and get it in there. Absolutely, uh, he's a man, man. I, Anthony's a shit. He's terrific. He's just a great person, right? He's a great, great. He's straight up, dude. He's yeah, straight up. Straight, straight up, up, man. Straight up guy from Boston, Italian dude. Tells you how it is. He's not shy. We'll tell you when you suck. We'll tell you how to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, uh, I, I, I found a couple in here. I don't think any of these are him, so I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to do it later. Once we're done, I'm gonna make sure I tag him so people can find him, ask him questions. He's gonna get bombarded with people. I made a video yesterday about. Uh, it was actually I made a video a couple of weeks ago, and I finally edited it down and posted yesterday about how a lot of people hitting me up. I don't know if you're getting this or not. I'm like, hey, bro, hey, I can ride a bike. Look, I, dude, I can be a Mayan, and you're like. It's a lot more levels than just hitting me up directly to, to get into the mines. It takes it takes a lot of things to go right for you to get an opportunity on the mines. It's not just 
show up and look the part. You got to know how to act, right? You got to get acting in, under your belt. And you, you have to have an agent. You have to have a team. They have to get you, get you an opportunity to even get into the room. That's the biggest part. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely was a challenge. And it's a, it was definitely a lot of work, a lot of preparation, man. And, and, and having the, um, I just, as, as I've been going, navigating myself through this, through this, uh, awesome and amazing experience. Um, I've had a level of respect for actors, but even more so now more than ever before. I know on kingdom, when I did that show, um, that was an amazing show with Frank Grillo and Jonathan Tucker and Matt Lara. And <clears throat> that was, that was an awesome show, but I, I played myself as a referee. You know, I just saw the preparation of the actors and that's when I really was like, wow, these guys, these, these guys grind, man. And, and, yeah. and, and then I saw that. And when I had the opportunity to actually get a real, real role of, of playing a character, and the uh, you know the, the character building that goes before that, even before the, the lights, cameras, and action, is the preparation for character building that uh, Anthony taught me. Yeah, and, all the preparation uh, goes to it. Yeah, that, that that was that was an experience, and uh, um, you know I did the best I could, and uh, and hopefully it was you know it, it was well received by by the viewers and everybody that, uh, that watched mine. So yeah. well, I'm going to tell you right now, this is the first time I think I've had 103 viewers ever. So obviously you have a lot of fans out there, a lot of supporters that love to see you. Uh, there's a lot of comments in here that are talking about how they loved you and they hate that they, you got done wrong. <laughs> 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 you know, they're like, yeah, fuck Conche, you know, they, everybody. So, so you're, <laughs> bro, you were received really well. I think yeah. you did a great job, I, and I'm excited to see more of what you do in the future with acting and, and where it goes in your career because, you, you know, guys like you, you are not a full-time actor. You, you also work a full-time job outside of this, and so just the fact that you did that, most people don't even realize how hard that is to do. It was, it was definitely a, a, a juggling act, and, uh, you know, but when – you have a goal and you have a mission and, and, and you got passion for something, which, you know, I love, I love being a detective. I love being a cop. I love working for the sheriff's department. It's the greatest organization in, in the, in the United States. And, uh, we got the best sheriff in uh, around, you know, and that's uh, sheriff Alex Villanueva. And, um, we got a, we, we got an, you know, an amazing department. That's, it's very challenging that what we have to go through on a, on a daily basis, as you know, and, um, you know, not always going to be light. Um, there's things that we do in this job that, that, uh, everybody wants a job done, but the thing is some people don't want to see how that job is being done at times. And there's, there's, there's no, there's, 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 as long as you do the right thing, and your heart tells you to do the right thing and treat people with respect the same way you want to be treated or someone or treat your mother, you're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I take a lot of pride in, 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 um, being a deputy sheriff. And, uh, that's on my page. And I always promote law enforcement in our military because, you know, we are, we are the first line of defense on the domestic front is law enforcement. Yeah. And, and our military is, 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 is our, is our, defenders of the free world abroad so yep well, well check this out so i'm gonna call him out sergio cuevas goes i knew i've seen you before don't ask how <laughs> and he put laughing faces <laughs> oh, that's funny sergio cuevas don't trip you know i treated you well <laughs> <laughs> if you were in the backseat of a radio car if i took you to jail you knew you were laughing on the way to the station homie so we're straight <laughs> That's something that I respect about, you know, uh, the law enforcement officers who respect the job and respect the people, I think usually come from, they come from the street, they come from the hood, they come from the, from, from the lifestyle of understanding it. And I think that they, they, they handle their job differently when you kind of know, right. I think yeah, in my I life, I've known that I always walk this weird line where at any moment I could have been behind bars i made dumb decisions as a kid i hung around some fools and when i growing up you know what i mean and at one point there's a big shift in the lifestyle that i'm like you know what 
I better, I'm, I'm better off doing this job because I believe in it. I also understand it. Like the fight against good and evil, it actually in my head exists in my world. Yes. And so, and so it's like, I, I've had stops as a law enforcement officer. And I'm like, yo dog, straighten your shit up. Get the fuck out of here and do the right thing. Next time I'm going to fuck you up. Right. This, this straight man to man talk of like, dog, I know you, I've been there. I've been in that position. And so all I'm saying is don't make me do this again. Get the fuck out of here and get your shit straight. You know what I mean? Like, and there's these moments that it all dictates how you control every situation. But the hardest part for me is seeing that a lot of dudes, like, like I, I have a lot of guys who couldn't make federal system, the federal um, law enforcement because they can't pass a lie detector test that are, have way better character than me, dog. Right. These really hard, <laughs> these really hard challenges to get into the federal system. Like they're way better people than me, but they can't get through. And it frustrates me because I always believe in, if you bring dudes from the street that understand the lifestyle, I think they, they can adapt to it better. And I think they they actually can communicate in a very, very, I guess, smart manner that, that is well received. Just yeah, no, I, 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 I think it's important to bring in, you know, which is what I like about our sheriffs is that he's bringing in, he's, he's hiring people that are homegrown that are here, that are Angelinos here from Los Angeles. And, and, and they come from within, yeah. not from out of state and elsewhere, which is not a bad thing either because everybody needs an opportunity. You know what I'm saying? You want to get the best qualified candidates. And, yeah. and, that, and that's something that he does as well. But, but I think the emphasis is, is bringing in folks that are, that are number one, in today's day and age, you're getting somebody qualified nowadays is, or let alone has a work ethic. Everybody wants free shit, man, and they don't want to work for it. So here in this profession, every day is different and it's very dynamic and you have to be prepared mentally and physically. Mm-hmm. And to find a candidate that's qualified is, is, you know, it's, 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 it's an interesting situation, but bringing in folks that are from the inner city that understand the culture that you're going to be policing. And from an area that like, I grew up in East LA, you know, I'm, I'm born and bred East Los, man. I'm a Garfield high school, LASD graduate, man. You know, hey, hey. Uh, hey. I'm an LAUSD graduate myself. Dog That's had it, a third brother. grade reading level, son. So, so <laughs> you, you know, we are very bright, brother. <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, my sisters work for the school district, so for LA Unified, so I blame them and their and their <laughs> and their mentors for our uh, our level of intellect, if you will. But um, <laughs> it's very it's very hard, man. And and um, I I. Uh, it was very important to me, honestly, bro, growing up as a kid, I really respected the sheriffs. I loved how they, they, they were no bullshit. You were honest with it. You kept it real and they were cool and they kicked you loose. You acted like a dumbass in those days, you know, and it was a different story. And, um, for me to go back and patrol, the area that I grew up in and give back, honestly, it sounds as cheesy as it is and to give back. And there's a little boy scout still left in me, you know, that, that I uh, wanted to give back to my community, um, especially in East Los and, and uh, um, impact some, some kids in any way, shape or form was important to me. So um, oh, that's not cheesy at all, bro. That's, that's, yeah. that's something that I think we have missing in society these days is people going back to the communities and forgetting where they came from dog. So the fact that you, you even say that to me, that's, that, that's, it's the way it should be. And I respect that more than anything. And, you know, and even today, no matter what I do, I always give credence to, to the humble beginnings of my parents coming from Mexico, from Culiacan, Sinaloa, my dad, Tepehuana, Zurango, my mother. That was a first generation Mexican. Dude, I was an ESL, bro. Hey. I, was an e- <laughs> I was an ESL. I was like a blonde haired blue eyed little paisa boy, dude. Like, hey, can not look, not like less, you know? And that was me. That was actually in speech classes, bro. Yeah. So I, I could I couldn't pronounce uh, uh um you know a lot of words in English. You pronounce chair, you say share, like my mom. Share, yeah, mom yeah. Say, give me a Pepsi. <laughs> uh, it's a Pepsi, mom. No, it's a Pepsi. Yeah, it's a when Pepsi. When it's spray. When it's spray. And when it's spray with tequila. It's, a, it's called a paloma. <laughs> I I used to laugh. At my, I still to this day say things to my mom because she says, well, she says something like a a bastard's degree. I said. Mom, it's a bachelor's degree. She was like, ah, shut up, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you gotta uh, love moms, man. That's it, it man. I'm the best, mom. dude. You gotta watch out for that chocolate. You get smart, <laughs> fool. <laughs> whack you in the head. 
She used to do the reach around the back like this, trying to squish my legs in the car. She'd be like, eh, 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 you know, oh. man, I'm moving, bro. I'm trying to get out the way. Yeah, or, or, or the pinching. Yes. Oh, dude, man. Or yeah. church, man. Oh, yeah. I remember those days. Dude. I had ADHD, dude. I was hyper, dude. I couldn't stay still. And, you know, I wasn't diagnosed with it then because they just thought you were just a dumbass or everything. <laughs> I, bro, me. I know. They thought you were just dumb, you know. I'm like, oh, man, I just can't focus, man, because, you know, there was no, I, I, I didn't know any better until I got older. I go, man, uh, I, I do have this. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I multitask so well, dude, I can't stay still. That's it. <laughs> Well, dog, talk, let's talk about your UFC career, man. Uh, your your MMA career, but you've been in the UFC. You've been in at any major Bellator. You've been in. I mean, you could list the list goes on and on. You've been a part of it. What made you get into the whole MMA scene? But as well as like you've been training for many many years. So what what started that path? I actually began training in two thousand two formally, and back then it was called NHB, No Holds Barred. Before it was MMA, then it transitioned into MMA. And, um, you know, I came from a boxing background as a kid. When I was a kid, I was boxing until I was 10 years old. And um, in 2002, obviously, obviously, when the UFC first started out, you know, there was a skinny, little skinny Brazilian named Hoist Gracie, who uh, wearing a wearing white pajamas and a black belt. And he was doing magical things and, and, and submitting people weighing 170 pounds against these monsters he was facing. And there was the inception of the magical Brazilian jiu-jitsu that uh, I, I fell in love with. And um, I was very, I was wowed by, by Hoist Gracie, Hansel Gracie and, and the whole Gracie family and, and, and what an impact it had in, in the world of mixed martial arts. And, and you have to have it now. It changed, changed everything. everything. Yeah, and, you, um, you have to have a foundation in it now or else you can't even compete in MMA. You have to be well-rounded in everything because all these kids now are now hybrids, man. They're just studs. They're like just insane hybrids now. But I began training in, 2000, in 2002. And uh, I I just, uh, the school I was that I, that I trained, which is a New Breed Jiu-Jitsu Academy in Santa Fe Springs, um, John Owano was, was one of my, one of my coaches. He was actually the one that made the original UFC glove, the, the first MMA glove. Yeah. And, and he would, you know, obviously sell it to the UFC and, and King of the Cage, which was a huge organization back then. And, um, and, and pride. And, um, I would go and I would train with fighters in my gym and they would get ready for fights. And, uh, I would roll with them and I would, you know, I was a body, you know, I was just a sacrificial lamb to get, to get worked <laughs> on, dude. Cause you know, we've all been there. <laughs> yeah, bro. And, and that's how you learn, but I would go support my teammates and, and the, and the guys that were fighting. And I was really fixated on the officiating. I go, wow, I think I can do that. I asked John Bowano, which was my coach. I go, Hey dude, I'd like to I go, what do you think coach? You think I can do that? He goes, Mike, that's all you. And I think I was a blue belt at the time. And he goes, he goes, yeah, I, I, I can, I can talk to a friend of mine. His name is big John McCarthy. I go, you know, big John, he goes, yeah, he's a good friend of mine. He's like, you. He's, he only, he works LAPD and um, you know, you guys would get along and the rest is history. He connected me with, with big John and in typical big John fashion, as you know, big John and your dad oh, knows yeah. him, oh, yeah. you know, he's, he's definitely the uh, um, you know, he's, he's, he's a golden standard in officiating and my mentor. And has schooled me ever since. I don't think anybody has yelled at me more than Big John McCarthy, uh, in, in any way, shape, or form. Man, I do was was you know he he expects the best out of you, and he'll give you all of. He's such a good dude. He'll give you everything he has, but make sure you do it. You know, make sure you listen. And that's how I got started, dude. Was was uh, my introduction to Big John, and the rest is history. And I've been roughing Bellator's UFCs, and and uh, just happy to be here, man. You've been, you've been uh, doing jujitsu for so long. You're right now currently a brown belt. Yeah, I'm a brown belt. Brown belt, dude. I I can't wait to roll with you. It's, that's that's way higher than I've ever been. I, I've I've never been anywhere long enough to receive a belt. I just travel, but I've been training since for over 20 years. I need to get my butt in shape. But we've talked about me going to your gym one of these days and training. But here's a here's an MMA question. I'm a fan of MMA. I watch everything in MMA. Everything has to do with it. What's your top three fights that you've been official for? Top three ever. Um, man, uh, I think probably the one that's 
stands out the most in a, and it was later on in his career was refereeing Fedor, mm. Fedor Milenko, which, which was an icon dude. I mean, that's Fedor man. And I remember it was in Chicago that I had that assignment and it was Bellator and um, he fought Frank Mir, which is another icon, yep. you know, those are two studs and um, Frank is Frank. He's such a badass dude, you know, and, and a uh, great guy, great family man. He's got a high-level wrestler daughter as well. His daughter, his daughter's a beast, dude. She's awesome. Yeah. She's a she's she's a straight killer. I ref that fight, and to me, just wow. I mean, I still get bro, I still get goosebumps. You know, I'm thinking I actually I got to ref Fedor for the first time in the United States in the cage in Bellator. Mm. Um, yes, it was towards the ending of his career, but just to say for me my own personal satisfaction and my own like wow i i this is i'm in the room giving a rules meeting to fedor and and uh i put my best game face on i I did the rules but inside i was just like wow this guy's just i'm here yeah Uh, i was that's honestly that's how i felt and you know i officiated the contest and and he won and he, he knocked out uh frank and I got to raise his hand and whether he, if you won or lost, it didn't matter to me because I'm not there to, I don't care who wins. I just want the guys to be safe, but, but to officiate Fedor yeah. um, to me was it's huge. that, that would have to be probably the, the most rewarding, um, most important, not most important, but satisfying thing I could say, wow. And I told Big John, and he obviously had a lot to do with it, to be honest yeah. with you. Uh, just just a little bit. Just John had a little <laughs> bit to do with me getting that assignment. Uh, uh, by force or fear, right, John? <laughs> but um, he had a lot to do with it, and, and they believed in me. And that felt really good. But um, I would say Fedor was, would be a very huge thing for me. Um, so, wow. There's just so many, um, so many, many, many great fights. I think the first time I was in Madison Square Garden, and that was that was that was also a, that's a, huge, dude. Yeah, and it was it was a Bellator event, and I've done it for PFL. But when I was in New York in Madison Square Garden, and and once again, John, you know, I'm always with John, and he he you know he goes, hey Mike, just. Look around and take it in, bro. You're in Madison Square Garden. <laughs> and I just looked around and I was like, you know, I'm not gonna lie to you, my eyes got a little watery, dude. I'm like, oh man, I'm I'm in the gardens, dude. This is where the greatest fighters and boxers and the, the history of the garden. If you're a fight you know, fan, everyone knows that place. You know Madison Square Garden, and um, it didn't matter. Obviously, I love Bellator. They treat me very well. And, and just to be there, it, whether if it was Bellator, the UFC, whatever it was, just the fact that I was in Madison Square Garden, yeah, that to me was like, I called my son, I called Mikey, and I go, hey, hey, mijo, look. You know, and I, I did the whole fan thing. I go, I'm in Madison Square Garden, man, look, you know. I go, this is the garden, mijo. And he's like, that's cool, Dad. That's cool, you know. And um, that to me was was super super cool man it was it felt really really good to to come from working my way up the ranks to being in the gardens and refereeing a fade or madison square garden that's the big that show was, right there that's that's like the major leagues right like you know like that's man. that's it dude that's it man i i've you know dude I, i'm in the gardens you know and and now i'm licensed in nevada so it's it's you know it's been it's been uh, you were one of the first people i called but i remember yeah. i told you did i called yeah. you right away but, hey, and that, and then, guess what and that's why you've been able to do more UFC fights because the license in Vegas is a very important one for a lot of UFC fights, correct? Yes. And well, obviously because of the pandemic and all the fights are at the apex center, you know, until, you know, um, the, the government rip, uh, lifts these restrictions and, and cases are down and so forth and so on. And every state um, is, 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 is opening up. So um, that's why um, yeah. everything is done in Nevada because of the apex center. And um, I'll, this weekend I fly out actually tomorrow. I'll be uh, I'll be refereeing uh, the UFC in Texas, so I'll be there as well. Where in Texas? Houston, Texas, brother. Nice. It, it's a uh, open. It's going to be open to to the uh, to the public, man, and it's going to be the second open show 
Um, Bro, so I, I saw that show the other day. What show was that? That was, was it was I was in Florida. The Florida show what was is that the, there was a show the other day that I'm talking. It was was it Cowboy Stadium recently. There was a oh, fight there that was. You talk about the Canelo fight, bro. That fight, there was people up in the rafters, dog. That thing was packed to the roof. Yeah, that it's was insane, amazing. right? That was insane to see. I mean, I, I love it. I think I imagine for the fight for the, you know, Canelo, bro. When he he does it, he's telling the crowd there, and they go, they just, it's crazy, bro. Oh man, dude, it, 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 it's 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 amazing. I got a question. Who do you think is going to win the fight, Canelo versus Plant? Caleb Plant. If they unify the belt, that's that's how they unify the belt. They got Caleb Plant. He's the one. So if 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 Canelo does that, he'll be the first, I believe, Mexican uh, in that weight class to ever unify the belts. And Caleb look, Plant. Look, brother, it, 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 if I say anything other than Canelo, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, my East L.A. license will be revoked, homie, just like Marcellus Wallace. You just lost your L.A. privilege, homie. <laughs> Dude, of course I'm going to say Canelo, man. He's a... Uh, you know, he's, he's, I like him. I like the way he fights. He's a, he's a, he's a tough kid. He, you know, he just bangs to the body beautifully. And, uh, and then he takes you out in the later round, like a typical Mexican boxer or, you know, Latino fighter. They usually bang to the body, bang to the body, bang to the body. And then eventually the shots will open up up top and then he takes mm -hmm. you out. You know, he's a great just, boxer, man. Great, he's phenomenal. Great, great technique, very smart, uh, great class. I love the fact that he's just a classy champion to me. That's always important to have that. Absolutely. For sure. It's just great all around, man. Well, dude, I want to open it up to questions. If you guys have questions, I want you to ask them. Uh, we have, you know, about 10 more minutes before I got to shut this bad boy down and get to work. Um, anyone else have questions, hit it up. It says, Hey Mike, how did you enjoy, how did you enjoy your time in the Marine Corps? It was good. You know, it was, it was, uh, it was fun and, it definitely was something that I needed in my life and it definitely gave me, I wanted to be a, I wanted to be a deputy sheriff and I wanted to follow in the footsteps of my cousin, uh, Cesar Herrera. And my cousin's a Marine and became a cop and I was a second cop in my family, but it was very important to me to, to accomplish that and say, I'm a Marine and, and follow in his footsteps and, and, uh, it prepared me for where I'm at today for sure. Yeah. No, I love that. Here's another question right here that I like. It says, at, at what point do you know when your character is getting killed off? Damn, <laughs> bro. They're hitting it right with a heart. Oh, <laughs> dude. Dude, I didn't know I was going to get killed until... None of us knew. Um, I didn't know until Elgin told me. You know, bro, I thought I thought I was going to be... A, I thought I was going to survive, right? I'm like, yeah, man, I'm going to be... You know, I'm going to make it to season four, homie, and, and I'm good. And then Elgin goes, hey, bro... I don't know if you know or not, man, but I said, oh, like, uh, dude, it was kind of like it, it wasn't stresses even what me was. out, dude. It stresses it, me out because oh, we're all that. eventually going to have that talk. You know what I mean? Dude, well, I had that talk, so let me tell you how it's going to happen for you. So, because <laughs> he, 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 this is how he told me. He's like, hey, dude, you know, um, yeah, you know, it's just, you know, you know, you don't, you, you know, you like, you get killed off, right? I go, no, I didn't know, bro. <laughs> I guess. He goes, yeah, man, you know, oh, I'm sorry, Mike, man, I'm sorry, bro, but it's got to be done, you know, and, and uh, you know, you're killing it, you're doing a great job, I'm thinking I'm doing a great job, man, I'm doing such, I'm doing such a good job, why do you got to kill me? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you hurt my feelings. <laughs> dude, I was all butter, dude. Bro, but the, the, the truth is, if it makes sense for the story, none of us are safe. No, it's, up, right? exactly. And the character that that Elgin had in his mind with with, with Debbie and, and the writers and, and uh, Brian was they created Ibarra as this character that 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 people are going to like because of his loyalty to the club. And so so there was something you could relate to that character. And, and it, like I said, it had a lot of Ibarra. Well, it had a lot of me and Ibarra that we had a lot of similarities, just like your character. There's a lot of things. It's easier to play Gilly because you kind of, in a sense, are Gilly. And, in a, part of like, me that is Gilly, yeah. It's, it's, it's part of you is Gilly, just like part of me was Ibarra, um, as far as the you know the the non illegal aspect of things. But <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> it, it 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 the character of him was that, and and and. Uh, but when he told me that, man, ah, oh, dude, I was crushed, bro. I was like, ah, oh, fuck. But you know, it's 
no one's safe. Like you said, it keeps people on their, uh, the edge of their seat. It keeps you wanting more. And, and, and it was short lived, but I got two good seasons out of it. I learned a lot and um, it was, you know, Elgin's the kind of guy that if he likes you and, and everybody there, you know how they are. If you do a good job for them, these, these writers are, are brilliant. They're going to be going places and they'll be giving you a call because they know you're professional. So I'm hoping I get those calls. Oh, you know, that's kind of the deal. I think as this show evolves and other shows evolve, you're going to get those callbacks from those people that know your true character on set. If you're a good dude on set, you will have follow on work forever. I really believe that. Yeah. So someone wanted to ask this, if you could fight anyone in history, like have that fight just to like, you know what I mean? Not like you're angry, but like to honor that, that, that brotherhood of fighting another man, who would it be? Oh man. (laughs) Uh, Jeez, I don't know. I can't. I don't. I don't like to fight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just. I just don't. I don't. I like to train. I like to work out. Um, I'm. I train hard. I train, and I keep myself prepared. So in the event that I have to, I have to do what I have to do. But I don't look for it. So yeah. I can't even. I can't even answer because I would. I know what my limitations are, and I know what I can do, and I know what I'm capable of, and and if I'm pushed in the, in that direction. Um, I'm, and I'm going to be very clear. It won't be very nice to someone who, who steps up because I'm a, you will respect me and I'll make you, I'll make you respect. Me. Well, that's if, kind of the I thing think. you train your whole, if, if you've trained your whole life for this stuff, I'm, I feel the same. Like I don't like starting, I don't start fights, bro. I don't, I don't start fights. I don't, I don't yeah. even want to get into fight. I actually avoid the fights, but if it comes Absolutely. down, to, if it comes down to the point of me having to throw blows, it's going to be a fucking hellstorm on this motherfucker. And if I'm not caring, if I don't need it, it's a lot of different things, right? It's just weird. Yeah. If it gets to that point, something seriously fucking wrong has gone down. Not all my dogs are barking. And if, and if you push that wrong button at the wrong time and, and it's something that I need to go home and survive, I'm going home no matter what. And that's just the way it's going to be. And, and, and uh, how I go home, who cares? But I know I'm going to survive. And that's just, that's just how I think. That's it, bro. And that's just, that's just, there's just, there's just no other way to look at it, but no, I don't like to fight. I, I hate fighting. I just, even the thought of it just kind of like, Oh, you know, yeah. I, I, the question. Yeah. Do you actually ride a bike? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I knew the answer to that, but I wanted everyone else to hear it. Yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah. It's, and, and my bike is called La Chola. <laughs> uh it's, it's uh yeah it's a, i have i have a street glide and it's custom and uh i just got it back from late law harley davidson and uh in baldwin park they're the ones that customized my bike and uh they're the ones that hooked it all up so yeah if you go to my instagram you can check it out i, I love that bike bro by the way hey who would <laughs> win in a fight rocco or wanda Le silva <laughs> rocco or wanda Le silva <laughs> Oh man, I love you, Rock Dog, <laughs> bro. Bro, that would be the scariest fight of my life, right there, dog. Dude, he's an animal, bro. He kicked both our asses, dude. I'd, I'd have to jump in and help you out, bro. Yeah, bro. All I want to do is try and I do. I try and fucking catch that beautiful new nose he has. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> dude, that nose has been redone so many times, bro. He's <laughs> he's he's a. Uh, he wanted to leave a man, bro. He's he's, he's, so, he's, he's such an he's awesome phenomenal. dude. I think great he's dude. Awesome he's awesome. Man. Yeah, dude. He's he's. He's a, he's a class act. He's just, I actually had a, I actually refereed him. So, um, phenomenal dude. Great guy. Last question here. And then we're going to jump out of here. Uh, how was the transition from Marine to cop to actor? Um, it's just a journey, Yeah, you know, and it's, 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 it's I'm a very goal minded individual. I set myself short term, midterm and long term goals, I actually write them down. And, and, um, um, you know, Actions speak louder than words. So I set myself goals as a kid. I wanted to be a cop, but also wanted to be a Marine. And acting was something that I got into when I started with Kingdom. Um, and everything that I do, I'm not in competition with anybody. I'm in competition with myself. Love it. And, and, and that's, just how, that's just how I operate in my, in my brain housing group is, is that. And um, so it's, it's part of the journey. And, and sometimes life takes you these different turns. And, I, you know, who would have ever thought of that i've ever be at mayans 
you know, and, and on the number one show on television playing a, a, a character that's, that kind of reminds me of me. And that's where life takes you. And so you got to be good to people, bro. Karma is always good karma. Treat people well, and they treat you, they'll, they'll, you'll get a good karma right back at you. I love it, brother. So any anything you want to plug, anyone you want to give a shout out to, man, before we close this out? Yeah, you know what, brother, man? Um, you know, thanks for having me on here, Rocco. Uh, I appreciate everything you've done, you know, as, as, as a bro, you know, and, uh, and for veterans that I support, you know, as well. Um, I'm a big supporter of veterans. So I'll give that a shout out, you know, on my behalf. Um, Laidlaw Hardy Davidson, man, you know, hit up Laidlaw's, man. Um, they did, they did, they did my bike. They did me right. You know, um, you know, AP meal preps, man. They're, they're the ones that do my, my organic meal preps that I've given you some, you know, <laughs> uh, you were eating my food on set, you know? Um, and, um, you know, just, just, uh, for you folks out there is, um, uh, you know, continue to support law enforcement and our military. And, um, um, we definitely appreciate it. Um, you know, that's, I just, I can't, I can't emphasize that enough and, and, uh, support Sheriff Villanueva. He's uh, running up for reelection and, uh, give him a, give him some support. You know, he's, 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 he's doing, he's doing good things for, for the department. So, um, right, that's all I can say. Yeah, no, I appreciate, I appreciate everyone who's tuned in this morning. We'll be back next Wednesday morning and Thursday again. Uh, we'll talk more Mayans when it comes down to it. I'll get more guys on there. Really appreciate all of you guys uh for tuning in go check out my sponsors i'll post them in there i'm gonna hit up the acting coach that we use as well everybody you guys have a beautiful day thank you so much for all the fans out there for supporting mayans supporting mike beltran in his way good luck out there mike be safe brother we're out of you here. got it brother like your office dude thank you brother <laughs>